Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack, and today I'm trying out Nina Aquila Legal Eagle Season 1 Demo Version, a title that definitely will definitely fit in the title box of this YouTube video. I just happened to see this, and it featured a thick lawyer waifu in kind of the same vein as Phoenix Wright, so I decided, hey, why not try out the demo and see what this is all about? So we're going to get into it. Game supports several control schemes. Ah. Okay, this seems pretty straightforward. This controls can be changed later via the option screen. Game controller or does my controller work? Oh yeah, it does. Perfect. Well, let's just do that then. That's this wasp stuff. Let's see. Tavistock, Thompson, Twiley. Hey, Nina. I'm heading out. Did you hear that case file? It's under Tidfill, right? I couldn't find it on the shelf. It's in the glass table by the sofas. Make sure you check it out. I'll see you at the courthouse tomorrow. Don't stay too late. You got a big day tomorrow. Meryl Tidfill. <sighs> so, it's a real page-turner, then. Ah, the phone has mastered the art of passive aggression. No! Nina, where are you? I'm, uh... Miller, and Def Miller Defense and Law Offices, November 5th, 9, 12 a.m. Why are you at the courthouse? Are you forgotten what day it is? Give me a sec, would you? <coughs> I'm still at the office. Last thing I remember, I was reading the case file. I guess I fell asleep? <coughs> Never mind that. Get down here right now. If you have my hands hold the defendant, I can't mother you as well. All the times I fall asleep. Better get to the courthouse. That is, like, is this one of those games where everything has a description? I'll leave you at the building site next door. Some stuff does. Okay. What were you expecting, a great ball? <laughs> ah, Pokemon jokes. No time for food, I gotta get into the courthouse. So she'll just say that for, like, the entire counter? Okay. Alright, I'm done messing around. Not even enough time to take a shower. Oh, that's classy. Ethan Fox, Tanuki Sama Studios present Nina Akila. Definitely not another bird joke akin to Phoenix Wright. the best of the RPG Maker aesthetic. Wow, Nina is thick. I have to say, I'm already kind of intrigued. Chapter 1, First Flight. District Court House, Defendant Lobby C, November 5th, 9.24 a.m. Why is it dark, Ms. Aquila? Your supervisor was here, and she seemed really mad. Nina! <laughs> she kind of scares me. Anya, I got as quick here as I could. You were supposed to be here an hour ago. I've had to arrange transportation for the defendant and... Did you come from... Do you have a gem or something? I ran here. Straight after you woke me up in the office. Is everything okay? Everything's fine, you know. Real pro under pressure. Aren't you? Of course! Everything's gonna be fine! <laughs> I like the portrait work. Really good stuff. 
In any case, we best get into the courtroom. Meryl, the bailiff will come to collect you shortly to sing on for a couple more minutes. Nina, one last thing. Attorney ID card. You've earned this. Finally, my own defense attorney ID. You nervous? A little, I guess. Now that I have that, I should show it to literally everyone to see what goofy dialogue they have. I'm there to help you out. Maybe it wasn't the best start to your last supervised tryout, but just remember, you're one of the brightest young lawyers I've ever supervised. Really? What? I didn't say nice things. <laughs> just walk in, sit at your bench, and stay focused on your client's innocence. We get going. I'll join you at the bench. As like Anya said, all I gotta do is head to my bench. She passed the gallery and on the left. Can I talk to anyone? No, these people are just here to watch, I guess. Oh well, worth a shot. So, left. I get what they're doing, but it looks like we're in separate walled-off rooms. I know there's supposed to be benches, but like it looks like it's as high as I am. Who's the new guy? Prosecutor? That's Chad Hawk. They say he's a real prodigy, but a stickler for procedure. Don't get nervous. Yeah, this is definitely Phoenix Wright inspired, because every prosecutor is some kind of like new record-breaking prodigy unheard of in the legal system before. All right, so the Honorable Judge Tawny. Man, even the judge is like a lady. <laughs> We're sticking to our theming here, and I respect that. Please be seated. We're here today in observance of the case of Merrill Tidful. Prosecutor Hawk, are you prepared for the case? As always, Your Honor. As always, Your Honor. Miss Aquila. Seriously, I've known for less than a minute, and I already sound like a Miss Aquila! Yes, Your Honor! Psst, what did I tell you about staying focused? <laughs> now that I have your attention, I trust you have crafted a reasonable attempt at a defense. I'm ready, if that's what you mean. Very well. Ms. Rock, please state the prosecution's case. Of course, Your Honor. Emergency services were called to the Green Acre camping grounds in the early hours of November 1st. Fire had broken out in the facility's main building and spread to some of the smaller buildings. Meryl Tidfield was arrested leaving the scene. Prosecution asserts that she started the fire to facilitate insurance fraud. And we intend to establish her motive for this, for this through witness testimony. He seems pretty confident. He talks a good fight. Let's, uh, let's find out if he's got the chops. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. Bailiff, please bring in the defendant. Defendant, can you please confirm your name and occupation? Why is she wearing that costume? <laughs> Damned if I know. If a certain someone had gotten here earlier, they might have been able to fix that. Subtle. Miss Tidfill. Meryl Tidfill. Speak up. Meryl Tidfill, your honor. That she, they, she wouldn't be right up in the judge's stand. There's a gallery between where the major stations in the courtroom are, and it's there because the bailiff is usually occupying it. In fact, you can't walk into that section without asking for permission, or the bailiff will tackle you. So you do have a voice. She should be back where that middle area is, at least. At least she got her name right. Like, okay, this is just, like, this is me being a little overly critical, but, like, seriously, it looks like we're in boxed-in rooms. You have got to cut those shells down by, like, half. I perform secretarial work at the camping ground and assist with event planning, which is why you're there in the evening in question. Ordinarily, yes, but that night I was actually there for a party. Also, I was on a date. What's that? I was on a date! I see. My report says you were arrested at the building caught fire hours after the party ended. Why are you still on the site at that time? Uh... I had to close up the site. When I spotted the fire, I ran to get help. And that's when you were arrested. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Meryl Tidfield, you stand accused of arson. How do you plead? Not giving... Not guilty! The state of the court recognizes your plea. Prosecution, bring forth your first witness. Here we go. Huh? I know you've done this before, but as you're, this is your last supervised trial, I'll fill you in one last time on how this all works. Hawk's about to bring out a witness who will give a statement. Listen to it, try to focus on little details. You're looking for an inconsistency, a flaw of some kind, which shows that the witness is either lying or you're mistaken. Don't worry about memorizing the statement through, you'll be able to recap it afterward. Look for inconsistencies, got it. Witness, please confirm your name and occupation. Jackie Marsden, Your Honor. I work as a graphic designer for Rookery. We gotta, we gotta step up our game here. If you're gonna you know, homage Phoenix right, we need way more stupid pun names. Rookery, the corporation. Yes, ma'am. Please tell us how you came to be involved in this incident. Okay. Witness statement. 
I saw Meryl leaving the campgrounds after the party while the building was on fire. If I'm honest, Meryl's always been a bit of an oddball. As far as I could see, no one else is there. She must have started the fire. Why else is she running around late at night dressed as a fire mage? Very wants to kill you, maybe begin your cross examination. Okay, well, you know, let's get the show on the road. Now we get to the main event cross examination. Do I know how this works? Uh, yeah, go ahead and explain this for me. Um, how do we cross examine again? <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Cross-examination is where we do our stuff. In a moment, you'll be able to review the witness statement from before. Split it into segments so easier to work with. Each part of the statement, you can do several things. You can continue to move on to the next statement or go back to the previous. If you continue to the last segment, you can just go back to the start, so don't worry about that. You can press the witness for a bit more information about the subject. You should probably start by doing this for every segment. You can also open the menu and save the game so you can resume from there later. You should try to save frequently. Save the state of the... Moving on. <laughs> I think you brushed over something quite important there. Moving on. We also review and present evidence. If we don't have any right now, we'll come back to that later. You good to go? Okay, let's go. So yes, this is very Phoenix Wright. Which is fine by me. I love Phoenix Wright. And we can't run Press. Oh, they had a voice actor lines. Of course, I don't know why she needs to show her butt in order to press for more information, but I'll let it slide because she's cute. Objection. Are you sure it was her? It was dark after all. That was fast. Really, Akila? There was a building on fire nearby. There was more than enough light. I suppose he has a point. Yes, I'm quite certain. Also, that wasn't even the part I would have pressed on. Oh, Arrow's been a bit of an oddball. That was a couple different hold it lines. An oddball. She's a bit weird. Bit of a stretch, though, to say she burned down a building. She just means she's a bit of a nonconformist, Akila. Like I said, a bit weird. As far as I can see, no one else is there. How could you be certain? The campgrounds only have one exit, and I was there. Anyone else would have had to pass but me. She must have started the fire. That's pure conjecture. It's her opinion. The court recognizes purely the witness's opinion. There's one more thing. Was she running around late at night dressed as a fire mage? I thought she was resting in the morning, November 1st. It was the early hours, around 3 a.m. Is this important? Yeah, I believe it is. I agree. Witness, can you please add this to your statement? I saw Officer Flatfoot arrest her at around 3 a.m. Jackie, you don't like Meryl very much, do you? The witness's likes and dislikes are not on trial here. Sustained. Miss Akila, please try to stay on topic. Your Honor, please humor me for a moment. Jackie, it very clearly you find Meryl's costume to be strange. It is strange. Really? I don't think it's strange at all. Miss Akila, I want you not to waste the course time. It is important. It's of vital importance, Your Honor. The defense asserts Meryl's unusual outfit might seem strange at first glance, except on one night of the year where it would be considered normal. Objection. Halloween. Objection. Witness is arrested November 1st. Yeah, this is one of those times where the prosecutor is definitely not on his game. She was arrested at 3 a.m. after attending a Halloween party. Order. Your Honor, I certain Meryl's attire was wholly appropriate on the night she was arrested. I see. I believe logic is sound, Mr. Kila. As the witness's testimony seems to fixate on Meryl's costume, the defense moves that this testimony to be considered unreliable. She did start the fire. She's a freak, a pyromaniac. She really seems to hate Meryl for some reason. Let's make a note of that. Jackie hates. M oh, okay. So like certain plot points are actually considered an item type. Witness. You'll see her outburst immediately. Mr. Hawk, do you have anything to add at this time? No. <laughs> I mean, after what just happened, that's probably the face I'd make too. Prosecution news to call its next witness. So I'll bring in your second witness. Detective Randall Flatfoot to the stand. Hello again, Randy. How's your wife and little Ryan? They're both fine, Your Honor. Little Ryan is teething. What? Um, poor thing. In truth, I haven't had sleep for a few weeks. What's happening? <laughs> Ahem. Ooh. Your Honor, if I may. Oh, yes, of course. How did you become involved in this, Detective? Well, it was something of a coincidence. I actually live very near Green Acre Campground, so I saw the light from the fire from a distance. I ran to see what was going on in the process of bumping the Jackie Marsden and the defendant mid-confrontation. When I walked up, Jackie was accusing Meryl of setting fire to something. Sure enough, Meryl was carrying some fire lighting equipment. That fire lighting equipment sounds important, I should make a note of that. They arrested her on the spot. And how may I ask, was the victim's demeanor when you did that? Whoa, whoa, hang on there. Your Honor, I find it important to microanalyze the client's conduct while she was being arrested. Actually, that can... that's not something that's above scrutiny, though. I agree, Your Honor. You do? 
does. <laughs> Your Honor, the prosecution has not charged the witness with resisting arrest. It would be inappropriate for us to consider her actions during the arrest as evidence. I'm not sure what the legality of that is, and I'm not going to weigh in, but, like, I don't know. I just think it's a really weird thing. They're, they're fixating on very m minor, very, um, the minutia of the details is kind of what I would say. Quite right, quite right. The situation shall be stricken from the records. Carry on, Detective Flatfoot. Yes, Your Honor. For convenience, I was placed in charge of the police investigation into the fire. What did you find? For a second, friend Meryl Tidville is indeed an employee of Greenacre Camping Grounds. She has worked for them for a number of years and is considered an exceptional employee. Employee record. Employee ID. We also looked at the webpage for the campsite, and Meryl is visible in two photographs on the site. This one, from last year. And this one, from the party on the evening in question. Yep, she was with someone that year. That's interesting. The witness from before is there at the campsite. She was claiming she was at the exit. Meryl picture A and Meryl picture B. If you want to view those pictures again, you can do so later when we cross-examine. Already I can see an important difference between them. We found something else. I can already guess what it's going to say here. Greenacre Camping Grounds was circling bankruptcy. Being clear, this is speculation, but an intentional fire to defraud an insurer would be one way out of that situation. Of course, we have no conclusive proof of that at present. Don't forget that last part, Detective. The last... Oh, right. A detailed forensic analysis will take a few weeks, but we can already be sure that the fire was deliberate, so not a gas leak, electrical fault, or lightning strike. Thank you, Detective. Very succinct. Are you prepared to make a formal f statement? Ready and willing, Your Honor. Okay, so this is coming together. I came over to the site after seeing the signs from the fire from a distance. When I arrived, Jackie and Meryl were arguing. The main building and some of the smaller buildings were already ablaze. Meryl was carrying some campground stuff, including fire lighting equipment. I can't think of another reason why she'd have it other than to start a fire. Very well, Miss Keeley, we begin cross-examination. Let's see another reason she'd have that equipment. Very well done, that last witness. Pressing them for more information to the trick. This is another thing we need to present in some evidence. Do you want me to remind you how to present evidence? Yeah, go ahead and I'd appreciate a few pointers. Evidence is a defense attorney's ultimate weapon. Some sometimes the inconsistency in a witness statement can't be found just by pressing them for more information. When this happens, you need to review your evidence to see if any of it disproves a segment of the statement. For example, a witness could say they don't know the defendant, but if you had a photo of them together, you could present that as an inconsistency. How do I remember all the details of that piece of evidence? You don't have to just remember. During cross-examination, you can open the menu and select evidence to see all the details of any evidence you have. From that menu, you can review pictures and read more info, which might help you find the clues you need. You check it for every new piece of evidence you receive. I think I get it! <laughs> That's super cute. I really like Nina. I picked up the segments of the witness statement and looked for any evidence that disproves what the witness is saying. Now I find any I present that evidence, right? That's right, just one more thing. <laughs> why do I... Why is my health bar mean faces? What that? You see them too, that's a relief. That weird floating faces? Weird floating faces. Yes, I see them. Presenting evidence take up the court's time. Presenting the right evidence is fine, but if you present the wrong evidence... Don't do it too many times. If you run out of chances, the judge will make an on-the-spot judgment and find your client guilty. So think very carefully before you present a piece of evidence. So you're good to go? You want something again? Okay, let's go. The keyboard inside her is seeing the signs of a fire from a distance. So let's stop for a second. <laughs> her picture is her upset face. An individual depicted on this card is licensed to engage in legal activities in the fledged city district and afforded the protections of a city district attorney. Are they, is it done by city? I kind of would have assumed it would have been done by state, but what do I know? An eye patch, I wear it over my right eye. Like, why? It just plays a sound effect when I hit it. Meryl works at Green Acre Camping Grounds and has keys to the site's equipment stash. Fire lighting equipment is used to light fires. I'm not sure why, but Jackie seems to hate Meryl. Oh, this picture tells more than I thought. Okay, I think this is all coming together. Okay, let's go ahead and save. Don't want to mess up now that I'm this far along. Okay, let's go ahead and press them on everything and get some in insight. You just happen to be passing by. It's near my home. There's also a cop bar nearby that I frequent. They do these amazing chicken wings. Stay on target, detective. Yes, sir. I have to ask about those chicken wings. 
<laughs> Nina focuses on what's important, and that's why I really like her already. It. Jackie and Meryl are arguing. It's around 3 a.m. What were they arguing about? In truth, I'm not sure. They stopped talking as I approached. Okay. Man building in some of the smaller buildings are already a ablaze. How bad was it? Pretty bad. We were up wind, though, so it seemed safe. We called the fire department right away. They turned up quickly. All right. Doing some stuff, including fire lighting equipment. Stuff? General campsite stuff. Tent pegs, a mallet, bag of collected trash. You know, stuff. Okay, so this kind of odds and ends. Can't think of any other reason than to start a fire. Objection. So she found us before she met you? A special, specialized fire lighting equipment, Akila. No one would just leave that lying around. Got an answer for everything, don't you, Chad? Still, he's right, I guess. <laughs> I see another reason why she was carrying that equipment. Check your evidence, see if you have something that gives her a reason. Okay, let's stop and have a look. Okay, so she has the case. Why would she have it? She has keys to the equipment stash. That's something. I wonder if Nina's eye patch is actually going to become like significant in a later case, because like it is listed in my in my evidence. Then again, it could be nothing. So you always get Phoenix's attorney's badge in every case too. So Is keys to the equipment sites. I think that's my ticket. I think I'm going to try to go down that avenue. Already arguing. Main building. Some small ones are already ablaze. Carrying some cameras. We should have them start a fire. Okay, let's try pressing on this. Objection! Detective, do you carry a firearm? Yes, I do. A department standard issue 225. Objection! Do you consider that a dangerous object? Your Honor, the witness has a legal right to carry a firearm and is compelled to do so by his profession. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. What? What's your point, Akila? In some situations, a person carrying a firearm would be considered dangerous. However, we trust the detective here because he's a profession where he makes use of his firearms. Skip to the end, Miss Aquila. Gladly, Your Honor. My client is a long-serving employee of the campground, a place that traditionally permits campfires. In fact, you can see her tending to a fire in this very photograph. The defense attorney's right. It does look like her in the photo. Well, of course she'd like order. fires. Did I leave the stove on? <laughs> order, order in the court. Mr. Hawk, can you offer an explanation for this inconsistency? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, as the detective's testimony was based around it being strange for Meryl to be carrying that equipment, the defense moves the testimony you considered superfluous in this case. I'm obliged to agree, Miss Aquila. There's no alternative but to ask you to relinquish the stand. Randy. Always a pleasure, Judge Tony. I don't think that would have ended. I think they probably would have had him revise his statement. Am I imagining things or flatfooting the judge? No, you're not imagining things. Probably a bit of a heartbreaker in his day. What's that? <laughs> oh, nothing important. <laughs> I'm glad the game retains a sense of humor. I trust you have another witness, Mr. Hawk. Actually, that makes me wonder if, like, both the photo and that particular uh, case file would have both worked. Because I remember, the, especially in the early Phoenix Wright games, you had to have exactly the right piece at exactly the right statement at exactly the right time. It seems like this one might give you a little more leniency in that respect. I think it seems like that photo would have worked, too. So, uh, if that's the case, if there's multiple ways to get to the correct answer, I applaud the game dev just for that. I trust you have another witness, Mr. Hawk. I do. Let's get this moving. Bring in your third witness. Witness, please confirm your name and occupation. Travis Bright, lead singer and frontman of Tyrakosaurus Rex. Tyraka. I assume that'd be some sort of musical group. You don't get out much, do you, Tony? I don't listen to crap. <laughs> oh! Talk about digging no prisoners. Yeah, I think we need to have a new case, because I think there's just been a murder in the courthouse. You got directions to the nearest burn war? <laughs> Now, Mr. Bright, I would have you referred to me as Your Honor. Rumble. What's that? Yes, Your Honor. Still can't argue with the results. If I may, Mr. Bright, your friend Meryl was arrested, so in her case, I understand. But why are you still wearing that ridiculous outfit? Oh, this? This is what I was wearing at the scene. I thought I was cussing her the same clothes for the hearing. <laughs> you know, given how weird these courtroom adventure games can be, that kind of follows. Customary wear, Cloud Cuckoo Land. 
Fine with that established. Can you explain how you came to be involved in this incident? Of course. Meryl, Jackie, and I have known each other since grade school. The Greenacre Halloween party is kind of a bit of a tradition. This is our fifth time attending. We dress as characters in our favorite video game from when we were kids, Dragon Fantasy V. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tip my JRPG nerd hat here. I always thought Dragon Fantasy IV was the better one. They lost their charm when the series went 3D. I always preferred seven. Casual is clearly three is superior. Ooh, Nina's got hot takes. <laughs> Carry on, Mr. Brett. <laughs> I love this game. I'm already sold on this. Early in the evening, I'm out with Jackie for a quick smoke before the party. Jackie smokes? Not that much. I guess you call us social smokers. Though she'll kill me for bringing that up. She doesn't like people to know. I tend to vape. Of course you do. <laughs> so you met up with her before the party. Yep, good for her too. She didn't have a light. She had to borrow my lighter. In fact, she hasn't given it back yet. It was a promo item for my band's last tour. It has our logo stamped on the side. Hmm, best to make a note of that. Travis's lighter. Mr. Bright, please just proceed to giving to giving your formal statement to the court. Fine, fine. Alright, this should be interesting. This is the fifth time the three of us have attended the Greenacre Halloween party. Jackie, Meryl, and I have been friends since grade school. So anyway, at midnight, Meryl had to move off to start clearing up the site. It's part of her job. I thought I'd go for another smoke with Jackie while we waited for her. But I couldn't find Jackie anywhere, and I lost track of Meryl, too. In the end, I just left. I got home around 1 a.m. Now she kind of checks out. Very well, Mr. Keeler, you may begin cross-examination. He seems quite cavalier about his relationship with Meryl and Jackie. That's probably where I should start. I'm going to start by pressing every statement, because that's how I play these games. You like it that much? Sure do! I'm hoping Tyrakosaurus Rex can headline the event next year. You like the event. End of story. Hawk, there's being, ex there's being expedient and there's just being rude. The Prince of Grade School? Same for Jackie and I. How'd you meet? Not a long story involving some homework, a pineapple, and a huge badger. Is it really relevant? I suppose not. Let him talk about the badger, Hawk! <laughs> she, she stands up for herself more. Phoenix is more of a emotionally fragile bumbler, as I believe the phrase that I've read online. Someone referred to him that in some discussion of the game. At midnight, Merle had to move off to start clearing up the site. That's part of her job. You didn't ask if she needed help? Of course I did. I'm not a complete jerk, you know. But she insisted, said something about she wasn't allowed to let party attendees into the site storage units. I guess that makes sense. It's private property, after all. I go for a smoke with Jackie and waited for her. Social smoke? Something like that, yeah. Okay, that was nothing. <laughs> I couldn't find Jackie anywhere in the lost track of Meryl, too. You lost track of them. The camping grounds are dark. Plus, are like trees and stuff. It's quite a big place. Hmm, I suppose that's fair. It was midnight, after all. I mean, I just left. I got home around 1 a.m. You just left without seeing your friends. I did look for them for about 20 minutes. The party was over, and we all live in different directions anyway. Alright. Something's not right about the way you're first Jackie and Meryl. Do I have any evidence which gives a better idea of their relationship? Okay, if that's the tack you want me to take. Let's go ahead and save for simplicity's sake. And have a look. Okay. So that's about Meryl. Fire lighting equipment. That right there is pretty interesting. <laughs> Meryl's lighting a campfire. Jackie is coupled with Travis. Meryl is coupled with Travis. <laughs> it's a T-Rex with a guitar. That is amazing. I love it. That That is wonderful. So, I think this is the tack I need to take. So, let's go ahead and read over what he has to say again. That is a true statement. We're allowed to move out to clean the site, it's part of her job. Jackie, while we waited for her. Let's go back real quick. It kind of feels like this is where I need to hit. I'm not sure exactly. I might end up making a mistake here, but. The thing is, some of this is a little bit open to interpretation. The fact that, one, the two girls hate each other, 
and <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I have to comment on this again, but like Meryl is still there, like in the middle of the gallery, like fenced in. Like she would be in a seat closer to the gallery. <laughs> like, why is she on display like a zoo animal? Poor thing. At least put her in one of those chairs on the side. Not not like not the jury section. I mean like there's two chairs on either side. There's a chair on either side of the judge. Like put her like in one of those at least. She's like looks terrible. I feel bad. <laughs> this is a, a courthouse that just shames people like incessantly. Oops. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to press about their date or press about the girl's relationship, and that's what's throwing me off a bit here. Part of her job. Same for Jackie and I. Let's give it a shot, I guess. Objection! Nope, music didn't stop. That's a bad start. I don't see how that's relevant. It it isn't, is it? Please remain <laughs> wasting court's time. Okay, now we know what that looks like. Fits on the three of us have attended the party. Princess Grade School, same for Jackie and I. It's part of her job. Okay, let's try the date photo then. Objection. What? Seriously? Penalty. I kind of thought I was in the right track with that. Oh, they all play that sound. Okay, I guess that's probably just a holdover from RPG Maker. I thought both of these would kind of get to the same point. Hmm. I'm gonna try a hunch here. Come on! Penalty. Well, I've already saved. Let's see what the game over looks like. Except you're sincerely certain of your client's innocence. Your ragtag defenses failed Guilty. to sway me. I find the defendant. <sighs> okay, now we at least know. What do you mean, no continue? I literally. Seriously? So I'm back. And here is where I made my mistake. Some of you may have already caught this, but during this bit of the cross-examination, Travis says the words, Meryl and I have been just friends since grade school. I read that as have been friends since grade school, same for Jackie and I. But that one word, the word just, changes the meaning of this sentence. So I finally deduce this is where I have made my mistake, because I need him to expound further before I can get to the point I was originally trying to make. So, let's take that just... Objection. This photo tells a different story, Mr. Bright. Fine, fine. Jack and I dated last year for a few weeks. It didn't work out. You never told me that. Why didn't you... Defendant, please restrain yourself. Carry on, Mr. Bright. Lady Marilyn started to grow a bit closer. And Jackie was fine with this. I mean, she never said she had a problem. Just how dense is this guy? <laughs> anyway, when I got late around 11 p.m., Meryl and I crept off for some alone time. I didn't see Jackie after that. I see. Your Honor, the defense requested this information be added to his testimony. Very well, witness. Please add this to your statement. Meryl and I have grown closer, and Jackie seemed fine with it. Press. You sure about that? She never said anything, and she can be pretty assertive when she wants to be. Why? Did she say something? Did she? I don't need to think about that. So, uh, yeah, she did say a little something about that. Now is when I use this. Objection! Got it. You may not be aware of it, Mr. Bright, but Jackie hates Meryl. Seriously? <laughs> yes, 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 yes! Whoa! <laughs> B 
Be that as it may, Ms. Aquila's further discussion in this area, good use of the court's time. The witness left the scene long before the event, and I'm unsure if you can offer any more. Insight. I don't like it, but I can't see any other line of questioning. Not every witness is going to be helpful. Still, maybe he gave us more than we realize. I doubt it. I concur, Your Honor. We can move on. Hmm. Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Hawk. While that short diversion into the love lives of these three people was informative, none of that changed the facts of the case. Mr. Bryce's testimony ends just after midnight. So that still leaves Merrill Tidfield near the building with fire lighting equipment and a proposed motive for the crime. But I didn't start the fire. It's always been burning since the world's been turning. Please listen to me. I never do such an awful thing. Ms. Tidfield, please control yourself. You better think of something, Nina, and fast. Hawk's right. Bright's statement was no help at all. Trust in your client's innocence. Merrill's innocent, and Hawk's case is just a theory constructed to fit the facts. The only way to beat him is to come up with a better theory. Think. Another theory. What do we really know? Mr. Bright was with Merrill, but she broke it off to clean up just after midnight. Bright then went home about 20 minutes later. Then in the next three hours, someone started a fire. Mr. Bright had gone home, but Merrill and Jackie were still at the camping grounds. Wait, could it be? Ms. Akil, does the defense have anything to add? Yes, there is something else. Yes, Your Honor. I think you missed something very important here. Mr. Hawk. Mm-hmm. You claim my client is guilty because she was present at the scene. Yes. And had a motive to start the fire. Yes. Wait. What's your point, Akila? Perhaps you didn't look close enough at your own witnesses. What? Order. Order. Order in the court. I'll have a cheeseburger. Ms. Akila, are you seriously suggesting that someone else would be responsible for the fire? I am, yes. I don't believe Meryl started the fire. I believe it was... Meryl. <laughs> no. The, the, of all the people we <laughs> chat off, see, that would be funny, but I don't know if I get penalized for that. You can get away with that in certain games and not others. Obviously, the only re remaining possibility would be... Jackie Marzen, the witness. If I may, Your Honor, Jackie was present at the scene. Wait, Jackie's whereabouts between midnight and 3 a.m. are unknown. Wait. It's obvious Jackie hates Meryl Tidfield and wanted to sabotage her date with Travis. Wait! <laughs> oh, wow, that got intense fast. I don't stand by where you say such mean-spirited things. What sort of person do you think I am? Your Honor? Yes? I want to testify again. Wow. Judge Tawny, I must protest. You forget yourself, Mr. Hawk. The rules in this scenario are quite clear. The witness may testify if she wishes to do so. Yes, ma'am. Them's the rules, Chad! Getting a little sassy there, Nina. How dare you accuse me of wrongdoing? I waited at the entrance of the campgrounds for hours. That was short. Statements made under emotional stress usually are. Very well, Miss Akil, you may begin your cross examination. Okay, Nina, time to knock this one out of the park. I'm gonna black your one remaining eye if you keep jumping like that, Nina. Now, the thing that's interesting about people who are lying is they'll either under-explain the situation, or they'll over-explain it. So let's press and see what shakes out of this tree. Jackie, you've been friends for years. Why are you doing this? Your Honor. Miss Sidville, please remain quiet during cross-examination. Just hang on, Meryl. We'll straighten this out. Okay, that was a whole lot of nothing. Jackie, there's something which isn't bothering you about all this. Why were you there? What? <laughs> The party was over at midnight, according to Travis. The witness is not on trial. There are many reasons why she would wait around. For three hours? This means Meryl had plenty of time to set the building on fire. She's clearly guilty. She was rooting around the main building for ages before I caught her. Ooh. I like how they had a built-in record scratch for that. Yeah, all I had to do was poke a little bit, and that bear just kind of poked itself. Drilled down far enough, you always hit pay dirt. I think you just drilled into the real Jackie Marsden. <laughs> Witness, are you suggesting you saw my client inside the building before the fire? You didn't. You wouldn't. So what if I did? You said you waited by the exit of the camping grounds for ages. Why then didn't you check if your friend was okay once the fire started? You did it. Just because you were jealous? You started the fire while I was inside? <sighs> Don't be ridiculous. After all, you're the only person with fire lighting equipment. How would I have started a fire? She's right, unless... Wait... Did she have a way to start a fire? Did she? There are ways. I need to present proof that Miss Marsden could have started the fire. Bingo. Jackie, you did have a source of ignition with you. 
No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You forgot from Travis. You got it from Travis Bright earlier that evening, and you instructed him to not tell anyone about it. No. And judging from your action, I'm willing to bet that you still have it right now in this very room. You can't possibly. I mean, sorry, wrong, 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 Miss Aquila. We'll see about that, Detective Flatfoot. Yes, Your Honor. I'll submit the paperwork later. We're going to stop and search in this woman immediately. Mr. Hawk, do it. Hey, stop! See you struggling, Miss Marsden, or I will hold you in contempt of court. Well? A few items, Your Honor. A set of keys, smartphone, and a lighter, which appears to bear some sort of design. But don't keep us in suspense, what's the design? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have my glasses with me! Mr. Hawk, don't just stand there. Yep, oh, he's going to go check it out. It looks like a dinosaur, and a guitar. Tyrachosaurus Rex. I... but... Uh, uh. Oh dear. Miss Marsden? She okay? Wow, she actually fainted. Or she's faking, one or the other. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to enter a statement into the records in light of recent events. Go ahead. The prosecutor's office has taken Jackie Marsden into custody. I'm trying to charge her with arson with intent to, to murder, or at the very least, reckless endangerment. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. We'll have to wait for the trial to close, tr truly close this matter. However, Ms. Aquila's defense has made one thing quite clear. The prosecution case against Mayor Tidfield does not stand up to scrutiny. Therefore... On the sole charge of arson, pronounce the defendant... Not guilty. District Courthouse, Defendant Lobby C, November 5th, 11.14 a.m. That case only lasted two hours, so that was kind of an open and shut one, really. Well done. How do you feel? Like... I feel like I'm about to throw a lot. Good. What? That's just the adrenaline. You'll be fine in an hour. How can you be so upbeat? We came in an inch of losing. Real Tidville could have gone to jail over a false accusation. You wanna know a secret, Nina? Something they don't tell you in law school? It's always like this. Rather than that, a case will go right down to the wire. You just have to keep pushing, up, keep pushing, keep up the pressure. And have faith in your client's innocence even when no one else does. That's what you did today. And that's why I think you're going to be a great defense attorney. Thanks, Anya. You're really amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now put on your best smile. I think I hear Meryl just outside. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. To tell the truth, I got really, real worried a few times during the trial. You were incredible. You never lost your cool even for a second. Like a swan, believe me. <laughs> it's my job, Miss Tidfell. I'm a defense attorney. Don't be so modest, Miss Aquila. You're a bona fide legal eagle. She really is. Gotta admit, I kinda like the sound of that. Babe, you're here. Travis. We should probably give them a moment. Not in your life. I want to see how this goes. <laughs> Whoa, someone's into the juicy parts of the drama. Meryl, babe, so happy you're okay. Let's go to celebrate. I mean, my band's a gig later. We can fit it around. Why didn't you tell me you and Jackie dated last year? I, I mean, if she had a problem, I thought she would just out and say. You should have at least mentioned it to her. Stop telling me that. Try someone up for a celebrate drink with Nina and Anya. We are? <laughs> Looks like it. What am I supposed to do? You can start by apologizing to Jackie. Down at the prison, presumably. I screwed this up, huh? No, Travis, you didn't. Not really. Jackie did when she chose to set fire to that building. You seem like a decent guy. Go talk to her. You'll feel better about it afterwards, I'm sure. Cool, cool. I'm out. Laters. Sorry to had to see that. It's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Awkward. Drinks? Sounds like a plan. Not even lunchtime. Eh, yeah, it's quitting time somewhere, right? <laughs> Let's get some mimosas. Go sign yourself out, Meryl. We'll meet you up front. You did well today, Nina, even after the rocky start. So lighten up. Your attorney learns from their defeats. But a great attorney also makes time to celebrate victories. Each case is a fresh start with a new client and a new chance to help someone who needs it. And sometimes, it maybe just a couple of times in your career, it's going to put some write something that's gone wrong. Remember that, okay? See you outside. The rest of the day, if I'm honest, is a bit of a blur. However, I'll do my best to burn Anya's advice into my memory. Part of you felt that it'd be important someday.
Jackie Marsden from the Clink. It's gonna cost her extra, but yeah, I can take care of her. What's your timetable? Yep, within two weeks, no problem. She won't have time to blab. Another one? Who? Defense attorney? No. Never mind why, that's my business. Plus, I say she's a bit of a rising star. Too rich for my blood, too high profile. Anya Miller, her supervisor. That can be arranged. I'm thinking poison. What's that? You want her alive? I see. It'll be difficult, sure. I like a challenge. Not sure why we're getting the kanji, but okay. Next time. I didn't do it. You just stopped running on ya. I didn't shoot her. I didn't. I believe you. But half the department coming the docks for you. You have to let me take you in. Drop the gun on ya. On your mail, I'm placing you under arrest. Not wearing this. Come on, Nina. It's in your contract. Remember the directive viewer segment at the end of each episode? Uh, case? I don't care. I'm not wearing a leotard. It, it's like from Gunbuster. You like Gunbuster. I do. I do like Gunbuster. Great. Don't forget the ears and the tail. The what? <laughs> what are you doing to her? The ears I get, but what are the wings about? Hello. Aguila channel. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Welcome to the Kila Channel, a special viewer-facing segment where we talk to you, the view, uh, player. I feel ridiculous. I'm a lawyer, not a croupier. What? How do you even say that word? Hush, Nina. In this segment, I'm going to talk about legal ideas and pop culture references from each episode. I get it. I can talk about legal stuff. Okay, so. All that, Nina. This episode, we have much more important thing to talk about. If you say so. This is a playable demo of Nina and Kila Legal Eagle Season 1, and it's only an introduction to the game. You hear that means you just played it. Thanks a bunch. Mia's adventures have just started. This is just the first step. So we don't exactly have the best sets. And our props are all hand-me-downs. And I think there's a strain on this stain on this bunny girl outfit. <laughs> okay, okay, enough about that. The demo's only around an hour long. The full game tells a story over ten hours spread across three chapters. Chapter two is the investigate a murder themed around a fictional anime themed card game. And chapter three takes place in a high octane world of illegal mountain road racing. These chapters are packed with features far beyond the scope of this short demo, including exploring crime scenes, speaking to witnesses, mini games, a city overworld, and me! Who's he? We'll talk later. <laughs> okay. If you like the first taste of Nina Aquila Legal Eagle? What they call our fans Nailers. Uh oh, Nina Aquila Legal Eagle. Anyway, if you like what you've seen, check out the full version of Nina Aquila Legal Eagle Season 1 on Itchio Today. Make note of this code. Eagle, Falcon, Condor, Condor. Okay. Use this password's entry to skip the first chapter straight into chapter two. Hey, Anya, hey. We, we still get paid, right? Because if I have to wear these ears again, shh, we're, wait till we're clear. What kind of actor are you? <laughs> okay. So, that was Nina Aquila, Legal Eagle demo version, or case one, really. So, it sounds like it might be a tiny bit of a time investment, but if you guys want to see me pursue this and go into the next part of the game and continue on with the story, leave a comment down below letting me know. If this was something that you'd really like to see me pursue, I need to know because 10 hours is quite the investment. <laughs> so... Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you want to try the demo for yourself, link is in the description, as is the link to the full game, now on Steam as well. This was really good. I liked this, but I love Phoenix Wright, so anything that strongly homages that is usually pretty alright in my books. Anyway, this was fun, but this is the Hipster Snack, and I'm signing off for now.